Hi there and welcome to Gluten-Free Habit. Today we're making gluten-free traditional style pizza crust. So in my family, we like our pizza. And being gluten-free shouldn't mean that you have to compromise, especially on pizza, it's way too important. So I really like this pizza crust because it's chewy on the inside and slightly crispy on the outside, just like great pizza should be. And my family says that if I didn't tell them it was gluten-free, they wouldn't even know. The exact measurements for this recipe can be found down below in the description box. And as always, make sure that your ingredients are gluten-free. So let's get started, here are the ingredients. You'll need some potato starch, white rice flour, brown rice flour, xanthan gum, salt, a little bit of olive oil, garlic powder, baking powder, some hot water divided into two containers, some active dry yeast, unflavored gelatin, and a little bit of sugar. And you'll also need some plastic wrap and some parchment paper. For pizza crust, I always use this cast iron pizza pan. It's made all the difference in the world in how my pizza crust turns out, and if you don't have one, I would definitely recommend getting one. It retains the heat really well, and it makes the pizza slightly crisp on the bottom, just like it should be. Start by cutting some parchment paper to the exact size of your pan. Now we can dissolve the gelatin and proof the yeast. Pour your gelatin into a small bowl and add in half of your hot water. Stir that up just to get the gelatin to dissolve. Now pour your yeast into your other bowl and pour in the other half of your hot water. And I'm actually just using hot tap water here. You don't want it too hot or it can kill the yeast. Add the sugar and give it a stir. If the yeast is still active, which it probably is, it'll start to foam in a few minutes. But if for some reason it doesn't foam, that means it's not active anymore and you need to get a fresh package of yeast. Now set this aside and preheat the oven to 400. Then you want to put your pan in the oven to get it nice and hot for our crust. Now that the pan is heating in the oven, we can start on the dough. In a medium-sized bowl, mix together your brown rice flour, white rice flour, potato starch, salt, garlic powder, baking powder, and xanthan gum. Go ahead and stir all that together. Now check your yeast and make sure that it has foam on top. As long as it does, it's active, so you can go ahead and pour that in. You can also add in your gelatin and your olive oil. Now mix on medium speed for about three minutes or so until the dough really comes together. Your dough is going to be much stickier and much softer than traditional gluten pizza dough. But don't let that worry you. Gluten-free flours act differently than wheat flours, but the end result is still going to be fantastic. Since there's no gluten in our dough, we need to find a way to replace that chewy quality that gluten gives. So the xanthan gum and the gelatin will take care of that perfectly. Now lay down your pre-cut parchment paper and spray it with some gluten-free cooking spray. Now scoop out your dough and place it right in the middle of the parchment paper. You just plan on getting your hands messy here because you will. Or I suppose if you want, you could wear some of those disposable plastic gloves. Now spray another sheet of parchment paper with cooking spray and lay it right on top. Now with the rolling pin you can gently roll out the dough. And remember that the dough is super soft so you don't need to put a lot of pressure in. I mostly use the rolling pin just because it keeps the dough level. If you don't have a rolling pin, no big deal, you can just 
press out the dough with your hand into a circle and just try to make sure that it's level for even cooking. You may be wondering why I don't just sprinkle gluten-free flour over it and underneath it instead of the parchment, but then you're adding a lot of flour into the dough and it's really going to affect the result of the pizza crust. Once you've rolled out the dough, you can gently peel off the top parchment paper. A little secret I like to do is spray my fingertips with the cooking spray. That way when I work it, it's not sticking to me like crazy. And now I start to shape the dough. Usually after I roll it out, it's not in a circle, but it's somewhere close to it. So using your fingers, you can just carefully reshape the dough. And while I'm shaping the dough, I always like to build up the edge just a little bit so that the sauce and the toppings stay put. Once you have the pizza dough shaped the way you like it, then cover it loosely with plastic wrap and set it aside in a warm area to rise for about 30 to 40 minutes. It's not going to rise tremendously, but it will rise and it'll make a difference in the texture of your pizza. After the dough rises, remove your hot pan out of the oven and carefully slide your pizza dough with the parchment paper onto the pan. The preheated pan will make sure that our pizza crust gets a little bit crispy on the bottom. Now put that in the oven at 400 degrees and bake it for about five to six minutes. Remember that we don't need to bake it all the way through at this point because we'll be baking it a second time once we put the sauce and the toppings on. When you remove the pizza crust from the oven, you'll see that it's still flexible, but it's sturdy enough to pick up and move around. Now transfer that pizza crust to a separate work surface that has been sprayed with cooking oil or something that is non-stick. This is what we'll be topping the pizza on. Now increase the temperature on your oven to 450, throw away the parchment paper, and put the pan back in the oven to heat. And while the pan is heating, we'll top our pizza. Today I'm gonna to do a combo pizza with pepperoni, bell pepper, and red onion. Once you're done topping your pizza, you can pull the hot pan out of the oven and carefully transfer your pizza over to it. On this second round of baking, we don't need to use parchment paper. We wanna put the pizza crust directly onto the heated pan to help the pizza crust get a little bit crispy on the bottom. But don't worry, it'll still be soft and chewy in the middle. Now bake your pizza at 450 degrees until the toppings are done and the crust is slightly golden. This usually will be about seven to nine minutes. And you also want the crust to get slightly crispy underneath, so if you're wondering if it's done, you can even take a spatula and just gently lift up on the pizza and see what it looks like. And there you have it, gluten-free traditional style pizza crust. I hope you get a chance to try it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. If this video was helpful, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next gluten-free habit recipe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.